Now, a dear sister in the Lord sent me this paper. She goes through this whole deal about Easter. Um, she did a lot of research. She says, uh, I know that you teach against the pagan rituals that plague this upcoming holiday, as I do. Perhaps you already know where and how the rituals originated and found their way into the early Christian church. And I do, but I'll show you what she did. She did a great job. But perhaps some of what I've dug up is unknown to you. At any rate, I wish to share my findings with you. Okay? When Constantine, and that's a Roman ruler, rescued the early Christian church from persecution at the hand of the pagans in the early 4th century, he also allowed the pagan faction to work their pagan rituals into Christianity. And that's true. In order to keep peace, as it were, not have to kill everybody off and just keep peace, he says, well, we're going to take your pagan holiday and mix it with Christianity and let's just all have a, a ball. And that's all it is. Now watch this. It says, uh, desiring the, uh, the material wealth that they would offer the new church. And, and you know, Easter is a very lucrative holiday, ain't it? My, my wife told me, she's into clothes. She says, do you know, Ron? They're going to be, especially women at church, not here at our church, but just at churches, who go to, go to church on Easter just so that they could wear their new clothes they bought. Isn't that interesting? I, I don't think like that. I, I, try, I try to get her not to buy clothes, okay, because we got to save some money. But it made sense. People go and buy their Easter stuff and the children and all this stuff. Well, that's what these guys were doing. Queen Samaris of ancient Babylon continued to live on even after her death, reaching a goddess status that she still enjoys today. She's, she's also known as, now watch this, Mother Nature, the spring goddess. During her reign as queen, her fame spread far and wide, depending upon the time and place. She became known by many names after her death, when she had been proclaimed a pagan goddess. Her name is also Isis, the fertility goddess. Artemis, god, goddess of the hunt. Now I'm going to show you what this hunt is. Now, this one hits me personally. Diana. That's my little sister's name, Diana. And on her email, she puts Diana the goddess. I go, oh, Lord, she don't know what she's doing. Her birthday was yesterday. Happy birthday, Diana. I, 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 I Facebooked her. She's in Korea, okay, South Korea. But Diana, we're going to run into Diana in Acts chapter uh, 19 next week, too. This is a pagan goddess. It's this lady here, see? And Ishtar. Now, Ishtar. One of the names she's known as, just look hard at that, and I'm going to talk to you about that word in a minute, Ishtar, okay? The name originally given to her in Babylon after her demise and others. As spring approached each year, it was believed that Ishtar floated down to earth in a giant multicolored egg. Multicolored egg, okay? To land in the river Euphrates over in the Middle East in Babylon. Eventually come to rest along the river banks in a bed of wicker reeds, a wicker basket. Wicker reeds is what they make wicker baskets out of, okay? Just, just keep going. The hunt was on for the Easter egg. So the pagans would go out to the, to the banks of the Euphrates and look for the Easter eggs, okay? Keep, Easter egg, wait, do keep going. Uh, Ishtar egg, as whoever found it first would witness Ishtar breaking out of the egg and be blessed by her for the upcoming year with good fortune. So you had to go and find it. Whoever's the first to find it to have good fortune. Verse number, number three, the sunrise service was practiced in Babylon and Egypt after Samaris' death. The pagan priests and priestesses would go to the temple at sunrise. Isn't that interesting? At sunrise. You ever heard of Easter sunrise service? Hmm. Dressed in new white robes, the priestesses also were new head, wore new head coverings, also called bonnets, Easter bonnets. Ishtar, Isis, the spring goddess, would be welcome, and all would, disp would disperse for the Easter egg hunt. So they would invite the goddess in a service, and then they all go and have the hunt. Tammuz was the son of Queen Samaris, and King Nimrod. Nimrod is in your Bible back in Genesis, chapter 10, I believe. That's what it is, 10 and 11. At age 40, Tammuz was out hunting wild boar and was killed by one. The people weeped and well for 40 days, one day for each year of his life. 
and gave something up in homage to Tammuz for the 40 days. So the people who was mourning Tammuz, they gave up something for 40 days. For this 40 days, you were supposed to give up something. Okay, just keep going. This became a yearly ritual on the anniversary of Tammuz's death, becoming part of the early Christian church and, and labeled Lent. Also integrated into the annual ritual was the killing and eating of a wild boar. And I'm going to tell you why. So you got you some nice ham. That's what a wild boar is it's from the pig family, okay? A swine. As a form of paying back the boars for killing Tammuz, who also, along with King Nimrod, reached God's status. So they would kill a boar every Easter, Easter and eat the boar as a payback for the boar for killing their guy. That's where you get your Easter ham. Keep going, boy, keep going. This stuff is, is good. This is the pagan roots. And we're going to talk about what's significant for us. Getting back to Easter, the fertility goddess. The rabbit is the oldest symbol of what? Fertility. The rabbit. Fertility. They say they're multiplying like rabbits, okay? Watch this. The rabbit is the oldest symbol of fertility as rabbits are the fastest creatures of procreation. This is the Easter Bunny. In closing, as I'm sure you already know, Satan has seen to it that the most significant day of followers of Jesus Christ celebrate, which is the resurrection from death after paying for our, for our sins, has been inundated with a glut of ritual that has zero to do with Jesus and his sacrifice on the cross for our sins. Now, what I went through, and you can get the, Don is taping this, so if you want to go through all this, but what I'm showing you is a lot of the tradition, and that's what I'm showing you, a lot of the traditional things we do today as people living in this world have a pagan background that goes way back to, to Babylonian uh, Nimrod when, God, when, when the Gentiles first rebelled as a whole against God. Now, in this, Paul says, Romans 14 and Colossians 1, don't worry about uh, the days, uh, you can celebrate, and Kristen and I are going to go and celebrate it, the resurrection with her family. Have, her mother's going to make some nice, beautiful ham. I'm going to tear it up. <laughs> you can go and celebrate it with your family. I just want you Bible-believing Christians, and that's my job and Joshua's job, to teach you the truth. And I want you to be able to explain this if somebody asks. Just ask one of your lost relatives, why are we doing this? Just put that out there and see what they say. Most of them are confused like that lady, but now you know. And if you want to get into a sparring, just start talking about all this, okay? <laughs>